Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today our journey with the Data Factory continues. And today our topic is going to be the lookup activity. Also in this video I will reveal to you why the lookup activity is one of the most important activities to learn in the Data Factory and what kind of cool things it allows you to do. But now let's dive in to today's topic. Let's imagine a situation that we have a data factory pipeline and in that pipeline we have a copy activity. Then we have SQL database and in that database we have a configuration table and we would like to use the contents of this configuration table to instruct our copy activity to copy some data. How we would do this? Of course we can use the lookup activity in the data factory and fetch the contents of that configuration table and have them available in our pipeline for our copy activity to use them. Now let's take a closer look how the lookup activity works in the data factory. And there we can see how the lookup activity looks in the data factory UI. The lookup activity is an activity that can be used to retrieve content from a dataset. The activity has two options, either to retrieve first row from the dataset or retrieve all the rows from the dataset. However, there is a limitation how much data the lookup activity can actually return. And the limitations are that it can return maximum of 5000 rows or maximum size of 4 megabytes. And after the lookup activity has run, then the contents of the lookup activity's output can be used in the following activities as dynamic content. Now let's take a look at how the inputs and outputs work with the lookup activity. In this example, let's have SQL database and in that database, let's have a configuration table where we have two columns, source file and destination table. On our first row, the source file is currency.csv and then our destination table is currency. Then on our second row, the source file is money.csv and then the destination table is money. And we would like to use these values in our pipeline so that we would copy the contents of the currency.csv file to the currency table in the SQL database. And then we would copy the contents of the money.csv file to the money table in the SQL database. So this table is going to be the input for our lookup activity. And now let's also configure our lookup activity to only retrieve the first row. And now our lookup activity runs and our output is going to be the first row of this table, meaning that we only get the source file and destination table of the first row in this table meaning that it's currency.csv and currency. Also, these two values are wrapped in this object called first row. Next, let's run our lookup activity again, but now let's uncheck the first row only setting and let's see how the output looks now. Our lookup activity runs and now we can see that we get a different output from the lookup activity. We get the count, how many rows were retrieved and then we get the value array and in that array we have all the rows that were retrieved. So in this case we have two rows. So we get now both the currency and the money configuration out from the configuration table. Now we have the core understanding how lookup activity works and how it can be used. Next, let's open up the data factory and do a quick demo to demonstrate how the lookup activity works in action. Now we are in the data factory. Let's start by creating a new folder for our tutorial 9. And then let's create a pipeline to this folder. And let's name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. And now let's add lookup activity to this pipeline. And let's name our lookup activity to lookup SQL table. And now we would need to configure a data set to our lookup activity to use. Let's first open up the SQL Server Management Studio and let's create a table that we can use in this demo. I have prepared this small SQL script that will create everything that we need for this tutorial. In this script, we first create a schema for the table called tutorial 9 configuration. Then we create a table to that schema called configuration table with two columns, source file and destination table. Then we insert two rows to that table and then we just select the data, basically show the data how it looks. We can now run this script and see that now we have a table with two rows. We can also refresh our table list and we can see that we have the table available here in our SQL database. Now let's go back to the data factory and let's configure our data set. Let's start by creating a new folder, tutorial 9 for our data set and then let's create a new data set to that folder. Let's search for SQL database and there we have it. Let's select that 
Then let's name our dataset and let's pick the linked service that we're going to use for our dataset. Then we can find the table that we just created in the table list. And after that we have configured our dataset correctly for this demo. And we can click OK. Let's just quickly preview the data to see that it looks alright. And it does. So everything should be set. Let's go back to our pipeline and let's use this tutorial 9 dataset as our source dataset for our lookup activity. During our first debug run, let's leave the first row only option as checked so we can see the output, what it does. Then we can click the debug button to debug our pipeline to see the outputs of the lookup activity. And now our pipeline debug has finished and we can see that we have an output for our lookup activity. And here we can see that we have this output where we have the first row object and in that object we have the source file and destination table. And in this case, since we only retrieved the first row, we only get the currency.csv and the currency values to our pipeline. Now let's uncheck that first row option and let's debug our run again. And now our run has finished, so let's check the outputs of our lookup activity now. We can see that now our output looks a bit different since we have the count value there, meaning that we had two rows fetched from the database and then we have the actual value array containing the values for those two rows. Now let's modify our pipeline a bit more so I can demonstrate to you how we can use the outputs of the lookup activity in the following activities. So let's add for each activity to this pipeline and let's add that after the lookup activity. So that in the logical flow the lookup activity will run before the for each activity so that we have the contents of the lookup activity or the outputs of the lookup activity available for our for each to use. And now let's add wait activity into this for each activity to just see how many times our for each activity runs. Let's also name our for each activity to for each row in configuration. Then we want to configure the items that will be iterated over in this for each activity and we can open the dynamic contents for our items. And here we can see that the pipeline expression builder is already offering us the lookup activities outputs for us to use here. So we can see that we have a couple of different outputs that can be used here in the expression builder. And since we're using the for each activity, we are now interested in using the lookup activities output array. So that's the last one in our list, meaning the array of data from the lookup activity. So we choose that and the pipeline expression builder adds the necessary expression to our dynamic content. Then we can click OK and we're ready to debug our run. Let's click debug. Now our pipeline finished and we can see in the output log that our lookup ran first, then our for each activity ran and then we had two wait activities, meaning that our for each iterated over two times. So that is the same amount of rows that we had incoming from the lookup activity. Even though we didn't do anything with the lookup activity's actual contents, inside that for each loop, you could imagine that we could have a copy activity or some other activities inside that for each activity that we would execute based on the contents that we retrieved from the lookup activity. And this is a very powerful setup in the data factory that would allow us to build this kind of a configuration based and iterative pipelines. And we could basically fetch like 500 tables from our source system using this setup using just three activities, the lookup activity, for each activity at the copy activity. And then we would just have to build the configuration for that pipeline without building more pipelines or adding more activities to the pipeline. And in the upcoming videos, we are going to come back to this topic and I'm going to show you how to build this kind of more generalized and configurable pipelines and what would be the my recommended way of building these pipelines and what kind of configuration I would like to use with these pipelines. That is all for today's video. I hope you now have an understanding how lookup activity works and how you can use it as part of your data pipelines in Azure Data Factory. In the upcoming videos, we're going to use the lookup activity to build more dynamic and configurable pipelines. So stay tuned for those. Before ending this video, I want you to know that I'm spending a lot of my free time making these videos. So I would highly appreciate if you would leave a like to this video and subscribe to my channel for more Azure and Data Factory content. Also, if you have any suggestions what you would like to see in the upcoming videos, I would like to hear them in the comment section down below. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.